Please like the videos, folks. Share the videos out on social media. Get more people involved in SEC football talk here at uh, the Voice of College Football. We got Will Gunter on the line, been joining us for a long, long time. Always enjoy having Will on. You can join him on 107.5, the early game, the all-new early game there on 107.5, the game, Columbia, South Carolina. So from Shane Beamer, we almost go to the opposite end of the spectrum because I think a lot of people forget or don't know that actually Dan Mullen's got just about as much tenure in this league as Nick Saban does between Mississippi State and Florida. And it was just the strangest season, I think, in college football last year because he accomplished so much in beating Georgia head-to-head, getting past them in the division, giving Alabama such a great game in the SEC championship game. When you, when you put it the Alabama standard and what they were last year, which was a completely dominant team, and you look at what Florida was able to hang with them, that was all the pluses. Those were all the pluses. And then on the negative side, you got the Missouri fiasco, in which he didn't necessarily help a uh, – you know, a fight at midfield and, and the comments after the Texas A&M game that uh, the crowd was too loud uh, in, in a late field goal loss. And then, of course, the LSU uh, shoe throw and the uh, the upset loss. And then it then it uh, kind of all exploded with with uh, just the showing against Oklahoma, which people understood that they were shorthanded. But you go, you show up, you fight. You do what you can to try to win the game or stay close, not just give up and throw up your hands. Uh, so that uh, that in mind, I know that I'm not there in Gainesville every day, Will, to hear uh, the media back and forth and the exchanges with Dan Mullen. But I would just think that uh, we would have heard a little bit more about that today uh, and Dan Mullen having to answer for some of those things. Yeah, I mean, it was a quirky year. Uh, I've always been of the belief that, and I, and I still am, that, that Dan Mullen is is the second best coach uh, in the SEC. Uh, did we see more of his personality last year than we had ever seen when he was in Starkville? Uh, yeah, and, and the reason being is Florida is a bigger job uh, than Mississippi State, and and if you're eight and two or you know seven and three, you get more publicity in Gainesville than you do in Starkville. Uh, you know what he did in Starkville. It is an extremely difficult job, and, uh, and he did a phenomenal job. And I think in terms of X's and O's, he's as good as a coach as there is outside of Nick Saban in this league. Um, now, he is does have a history of having a, a bad loss. If you go back and you look at his tenure at Mississippi State, he would typically beat somebody maybe he was not supposed to beat. He would typically lose in a season to somebody he wasn't necessarily supposed to lose to. But I think he's a great X's and O's coach. What we saw last year was personality. But you know what, Mark, there was a lot of us, a lot of people out there can relate to it, whether you were cooped up in the house or you were stuck around your kids or your family or maybe your significant other for an extended period of time. Maybe you got a little wacky, too. Maybe maybe you did a few things that, that you don't typically do uh, during the during the season and, and you showed a little bit of personality. Dan Mullen did that. I don't want to defend him necessarily because, you know, you are the head coach of a multi-million dollar organization and you've got to treat it as such. But, you know, I, I don't really blame him sometimes. I think he's a wacky character. Uh, today he's there wearing – I'm not a shoe guy, but whatever Jordans he was wearing there today, you know, that's a little thing. That's a little stick he's got that he he does. Uh, he, he's, he is kind of a funny character, and, and, and you don't see that uh, when, when, a, when a coach is in Starkville. When they're in Gainesville and they're in that fishbowl and they're in that limelight and you're in a program like Florida, yeah, you're going to see that personality a little bit more and – he showed it. We'll see how he does. I was interested to hear him talk about Emory Jones today. Uh, he's got to replace, obviously, a lot of talent. But but talking about what he's got coming back and the number of snaps that they played and how comfortable he felt with his program at this point, I thought was very interesting. And he's got to defend the defense. Uh, they were not up to Florida Stanford standards last year. And and what can he say at this point? They they. They can't go out there and prove anything in the middle of uh, July. But at this point, he just goes out and says, I love the enthusiasm. I love the uh, the attitude coming off some disappointments uh, on the field that they're trying to clean things up. They're trying to do the right things, get in the weight room, be better players, learn the assignments. You know, he said all those things about the defense. Yeah, I mean, Todd Grantham is certainly a guy who's been around the league for a while, has been in Georgia uh, now, obviously, down in Florida and, and is a well-respected defensive coordinator. I do think it's a make-or-break year for, for Todd Grantham uh, down there. Uh, count me in the, in the 
and the number of people who was maybe surprised that you didn't see a, a change in defensive coordinator. But again, when you win the SEC East, and he pointed that out today, he made sure to just kind of remind everybody, hey, it was it was us who won the East, not Georgia. Uh, not sure if y'all remember that, but it was it was it was it was Florida. Uh, maybe you don't make that change, and I'll be interested because South Carolina's got a connection there right now. They they went and got Tory and Gray, who is the defensive backs coach at Florida, and Gray has already been able to do. Uh, a pretty solid job on the recruiting trail and kind of make a statement there. But it, it will be interesting to see that defense for Florida. And you look at the schedule, obviously hosting Alabama uh, is is going to be a lot of fun. I think that's September 18th. Uh, you know, I look at it. They, they've got to come to South Carolina on November 6th, which is the week after the cocktail party. So they have a, they have a schedule in front of them that's, that's not necessarily the easiest one in the league. But Emory Jones, uh, the crazy part of talking season as we're going through, I've seen him projected as a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. How does he perform this year? It's hard to argue with Dan Mullen's history with quarterbacks and then the talent that Emory Jones already has. I think more so than any other team in the league, I've seen uh, a greater dispersity of where people think Florida's going to land. Uh, I, I think everybody else with every other team is pretty much set on, you know, this is, this is a 500 team. This is a championship team. This is a whatever but with Florida, uh, I think a lot of people think that they're going to continue on. This Dan Mullins got them improving every year, and other people think, hey, they lost all that offense. Look at how they fell apart last year. Look at that schedule. Man, this is 7-5. and five. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you see that. I, again, the schedule is what it is, uh, and, and you, you do get Alabama and LSU. You got to go to LSU, and I know we'll talk about them in a minute with Ed Orgeron and, and what, they're, what we're trying to figure out about LSU. But, I mean, you look at that again. If you look at Dan Mullen's history, he's going to win probably a game that, that's going to surprise you. Maybe it, is the, maybe it is the Alabama game. Maybe it is Alabama in the swamp, and, and Bryce Young's not necessarily ready for what Dan Mullen wants to do. I mean, again, look at what he put up on him last year. And, and I, liked, I, I think the guy that you watch from with Florida this year that, that takes over is Justin Shorter, the, the, the transfer from Penn State. I think that's a guy that can make an instant impact for them. They've got some other weapons, obviously, as well. I know when you lose Trask and you lose Tony and you lose Pitts, you go, oh, that offense is going to fall off. Maybe it's not on that level, but I don't expect it to take a huge, huge step backwards. So he'll win one of those, and then he'll probably lose one. Maybe he loses – what is it? They, I think they, they go to Missouri. And I, I kind of – I like Eli Drinkowitz uh, and what Missouri's doing. Maybe because South Carolina comes – after the Georgia game, and you know they're going to be beaten up after that game, and, and maybe that's a game where Shane Beamer is able to trip him up in the williams Bryce Stadium in November. It wouldn't surprise me to see him win one that he's supposed to, that he's not supposed to, and lose one that you really are shocked about on Sunday morning. 